Here in my hands, I have two beautiful green Asian mantis. And in today's video, I'm going to educate you on exactly how you can care for these praying mantises. In addition to that, we're also going to educate you on everything that you're going to need in order to actually set up a suitable environment for these guys to be living in. So let's begin the video. To begin with, prey mantises are fascinating little creatures. There are actually over 2,300 different species of mantis across the world. Now, please keep in mind that not all species of mantis are suitable for beginners, and all species will require slightly different care and slightly different setup, depending on the specific species. So, like I say, please make sure to do your research into the specific species which you're purchasing, and ensure you tweak your setup and care to match the species which you've purchased. So this video is basically just a generic video and the information I provide within this video is specifically tailored for two of the most commonly kept beginner species which is the green Asian mantis or even the ghost mantis. Now both of these species are very docile, great for handling, easy to care for and also maintain and upkeep, as well as being fairly hardy of a species. Both these species make great pets for kids and adults alike. If you are a beginner and you've never kept something like a praying mantis or a reptile before, I'd highly recommend either one of these two species. And like I say, the information within this video is specifically tailored for both the green Asian mantis and also the ghost mantis. So to begin with, let's actually go over their enclosure and their enclosure sizes. So first of all, you want an enclosure which has a height of at least three times the mantis's length. Keep in mind that these guys do spend the majority of their time upside down at the top of their enclosure. And basically they gravitate towards height. So you want to ensure they have more height than length or width or even depth of an enclosure. Now your enclosure size will basically depend on the size of your mantis. These little guys do grow rapidly. So I'd highly recommend having the different size enclosures readily available and ready to use for as they grow through their stages of life. Now when you buy your prey mantis it's highly likely that you'll get a very young mantis considering they only live for a few years. So when you get your baby or juvenile mantis I'd highly recommend starting off with one of these acrylic enclosures. This is the smallest size and like I say this will definitely do it for a little while before you have to upsize the enclosure to a different size one. Now once your mantis has grown a bit and it's had a few molts I'd highly recommend upsizing the enclosure to this size one. So as you can see it's quite a big step up and again this size will be perfect for your praying mantis once it's had a few molts. Now once your mantis is starting to get towards adulthood, I'd highly recommend upsizing your mantis's enclosure from this size to this size, which is the biggest size acrylic enclosures. As you can see, again, it's a huge step up from the previous size. And in comparison to the first size, as you can see, it's a big, huge increase in height, but also in length and depth. Now you can also use these glass terrariums and if I'm honest these work great too although be mindful that they are more expensive to buy than the acrylic enclosures and honestly it does come down to personal preference but like I say if you've got a baby or juvenile praying mantis I'd highly recommend starting smaller and then upsize them as they start to grow now you'll need to ensure that the enclosure you provide has ventilation or mesh at the top of the enclosure to allow airflow but also prevent stagnant air and also mold growth from inside the enclosure which is why personally I think the acrylic enclosures are the perfect option for you but also one of the cheapest options too. I'll make sure to leave links to these enclosures in my description below. You'll also want to place your enclosure somewhere which is out of direct sunlight 
but also somewhere which isn't dark, for example, like a cupboard. And like I say, I recommend starting with the smaller enclosure and upsize the enclosure as and when your mantis grows through different stages of its life. So next of all, once you have your enclosure, you're going to want to provide a suitable substrate. So let's go over that now. So for these mantis, I recommend either using cocoa fiber or you could also use something like the Jungle Bio. You can also use something like the Arcadia Earth Mix. This is more of a bioactive substrate for them. Or even the Bio Life by ProRep. This also would work great too. Like I say, basically any sort of tropical substrate mix will work just fine for these mantises. Now, once you actually put your substrate into your enclosure, I recommend taking this opportunity to mist down the substrate before adding all the decor. So once you've got your substrate, in the next thing that you're going to want to add to your enclosure is actually the decor now if i'm completely honest with you the best sort of decor which you could provide to these mantises is just simply sticks and twigs they absolutely love sticks and twigs because it allows them to be able to climb to the top of the enclosure making it a lot easier for them to be able to get to a position to hang upside down in addition to that it also allows your mantis to be able to fully make use of all of the space within the enclosure now when it actually comes down to like plant decor you can use fake plants, but you can also go bioactive and use live plants too. In my opinion, I would highly recommend going bioactive with these guys. Not only will it look aesthetically pleasing, but also it will help retain humidity for a longer period of time. Now you can actually buy these awesome little decor packs which come with like moss, twigs, sticks and also some fake plants and some of them even come with like seed pods. These are great because they're fairly cheap but also make your enclosure look stunning. In addition to that you can also buy just purely different seed pods and these also look really nice in the enclosures too to decorate the land area. Again, I'll make sure to leave links in my description below to these products. So next of all, I'd like to go over heating and lighting with these praying mantises. Now, like we mentioned earlier within this video, they shouldn't be kept in direct sunlight, but you do need some sort of day and night cycle. So you can simply use one of these white python LED lights. These are great because not only are they cheap, but also they are very bright and they'll simply sit directly on top of your enclosure. This will provide them enough light for a day and night cycle. And all you need to really do is either switch it on or off each day, or you can even plug it in on a plug-in timer. Now regarding heating, these guys don't really need much heating if I'm completely honest with you. However, it does depend where you live in the world. These mantis only really need around room temperature, which most people's homes are usually between 22 and 26 degrees Celsius, which is a perfect ideal condition for these guys. Now their actual temperature range would actually be 22 to 27 degrees Celsius, Celsius, which is 71 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you find that your temperatures are below 22 degrees Celsius, that is when I would recommend maybe running something like a small heat mat onto the side of the enclosure and simply plug it in to a mat stat in order to actually control and regulate that temperature. But honestly, I would just recommend seeing how you get on before buying this because you might find you won't actually need this. Now for my UK viewers, the only real time you're going to maybe have a problem is during the winter months. As you're probably aware, we get quite cold winters. So just keep an eye on your temperatures, especially at nighttime throughout the winter. And like I say, add a bit of heating if needs be. Now you can also use a heat lamp too. Although in my opinion, I feel like the heat lamps give off a bit too much heat for these guys. So just keep that in mind. But like I say, a heat mat will work perfectly fine. Just stick it to the side of the enclosure if you need to. So now that we have covered heating and lighting and you now understand what sort of temperature requirements these guys want, let's now move on to discussing humidity. Now, providing that you're using a suitable substrate, this should provide enough humidity for your mantis. Now, to maintain your humidity, I recommend misting down the substrate 
once a week. But make sure that when you do mist the substrate, it's only moist and not drenched or soggy. But also I would recommend to gently mist down the walls of the enclosure once every other day. And this will basically help upkeep the humidity, but also allows your mantis to have a drink and stay hydrated. Now you'll likely need to clean the walls of the enclosure because over time you'll likely get a small calcium buildup on the side of the enclosures. So if you do need to clean the inside of the enclosure walls, make sure that you use a reptile safe disinfectant and not just any regular household disinfectant because otherwise this could lead to death from the chemicals inside your regular household disinfectants. Now to actually mist down your enclosure you're probably going to need to get yourself one of these which is just a bog standard pump spray misting bottle and like I say this will be perfect for misting down your enclosures. Now to actually test your temperature and test your humidity I recommend picking up either a dial or a digital hygrometer and thermometer. You can also get this one which is a combinator which actually does the two um, and like I say there's quite a few varieties on the market. Like I say just get yourself whatever one to test the temperature but also test your humidity levels. So that's virtually everything that you're going to need to know regarding their setup and also the majority of their care requirements. So there are a few last little bits I'd like to to go over regarding their care which you'll also need to know about and that is regarding their diet and feeding and also you'll want to know about molting. So to begin with let's go over their diet and feeding requirements. So first of all I would recommend removing dead insects which haven't been eaten daily. Now for their food honestly one of the best things you can feed them is fruit flies. Now you'll basically want to feed an item which is roughly the size of the mantis abdomen. So for young mantis you can start them off on the golden fruit flies and then upsize them to the standard size fruit flies as they grow it in size but also in the long run you can move them on to the green bottle flies and also the blue bottle flies when they're actually adults. You can also offer them locusts when they're adults too. This will also be a great meal for them. I also would recommend to every so often feed them either mealworms or waxworms as a treat. But keep in mind that this shouldn't be a staple diet. This should just be every so often as a treat. If you want to also offer something different as a treat, you could also get a chopstick and put a bit of honey on the end of it. And this is honestly a mega treat for them and they will love the honey which you give to them. But again, keep in mind that honey isn't a daily staple diet. Now for young baby or juvenile mantis, I would recommend feeding them twice a week and for adults feed them once a week. Now you should be able to actually tell if your mantis is hungry because their abdomen will basically become rather flat instead of being round and plump. When it's flat, this is a good indicator that they are hungry. It's also hard to overfeed mantis because if they are full and not actually hungry, they simply just won't touch the foods because they're not interested in food at that moment. Now I'd also like to mention that your mantis may also refuse to eat when they are preparing themselves to molt which leads us on to the last part of their care requirements which is regarding molting. So when a mantis is preparing to molt they usually behave almost sluggish and can also appear to lack in colour. This usually is the biggest indicator that they are about to molt. Now when they do molt they will basically hang upside down inside their enclosures and then slide themselves out of their existing fauna exoskeleton. Now once they have actually molted out of their skin I'd highly advise to refrain from handling your mantis for at least two to three days as they tend to be rather weak and soft and also vulnerable for a few days after the process has finished. So 
like I say, just try to leave them be and let them do their own thing and also let them harden up before you actually handle them again. Now, as long as you're providing adequate substrate and humidity conditions, it's unlikely your mantis will have a bad molt. However, I will say that this can happen. Usually the most common thing to happen though is the mantis accidentally falls from the top of the enclosure. Now, if your mantis does have a bad molt and does lose a leg or something try not to worry about this because they tend to regrow this after they have their next molting so that's basically what you need to know regarding molting and all their last care requirements however there are a few other things i'd like to mention so first of all i'd recommend keeping your mantis on their own as mantis can eat each other if housed together. Next of all, if you're wondering what gender you have, I will say you can't really tell as much when they are young, but when the adults, if you look at the underside of their abdomen, males tend to have eight segments, whereas females tend to only have six segments. This is usually a good rule of thumb to follow to be able to work out the sex of your mantis. Now, last of all is handling. Please keep in mind that these mantis are fragile and can get injured easily if mishandled. So I would recommend using a chopstick to help your mantis climb on and then allow them to climb onto your hand by simply holding your hand out in front of them and basically let them climb onto you at their own pace. Just try to go slow and also be gentle. Also keep in mind that they may occasionally jump off your hands and with adults once they have actually developed their wings they may also fly so just be mindful of this so there we have it guys you now have all of the information you're going to need in order to set up and maintain your pet mantis like i mentioned earlier in the video they are very easy to actually care for they're great for kids especially if they want to keep a reptile in the future having a pet mantis Mantis to begin with is one of the best starting points because it will teach kids all about how to maintain temperature but also how to maintain humidity but in addition to that it's also learning how to actually care for something as well as feeding it on a regular basis plus in addition to this they are fairly cheap pets to actually buy and also set up as well as upkeep so that's pretty much it for today's video guys i hope that you learned something from this video and i hope that you found it valuable if you do have any questions please feel free to drop us a comment and i'll make sure to get back to you also let us know in the comments if you already own a praying mantis and let us know what kind of experiences you have had owning them don't forget to follow us on social media and drop us a like if you enjoyed this video to let us know that you enjoyed the video if you did find this video helpful, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. We have lots of reptile related content lined up for 2025 and I'm very excited to start filming them. But also by subscribing, you also help our channel grow. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. See ya!